There's a reason why contracts are being talked about this week, and oh, don't worry, we'll get to that. But I thought rather than doing a video solely based on the free people who have the potential to ruin my life and all faith I have in this ownership, please, for the love of God, give them what they want. I'm begging you, give them your firstborn child if you absolutely have to. Sorry about that. I thought I'd take a look at a multitude of different players who are approaching the end of their time at their respective clubs, hence they are coming to the end of their current deal. With that being said, welcome to Good Sport Reviews, and this is 10 players who are out of contract at the end of this season. Number 10, Mo Salah, Virgil van Dijk, and Trent Alexander-Arnold. I mean, get the obvious one out of the way, and yes, you can call it a cheat if you want because I've grouped the three together, but let's be honest, this feels like a package deal when it comes to it in conversation. Liverpool's captain, vice-captain, and third highest score in their history all have expiring contracts going into the 24-25 season and this is a horrible situation to be in. While Trent and Van Dijk have said they aren't concerned about this and it'll be dealt with in due course, Mo Salah has taken the offence of saying after Liverpool's 3-0 win against Manchester United that no one at the club has even discussed the possibility of a new contract with him and that he's technically playing his final year at the club. This essentially puts the ball in Liverpool's court, with it obvious that the Premier League legend is pushing for some answers, and while Van Dijk and Salah are in their 30s, they still operate at the highest level of football and are putting out terrific numbers, with Salah registering three goals and three assists in the first three games of the season and Van Dijk not conceding a goal in either of them. Trent speaks for himself in terms of talent and the club need to tie down their three already highest earners before they start negotiating with other clubs in January and lose not only three of their greatest ever players but the trust of the fans as well. Number 9, Kyle Walker-Peters. After his move to Southampton from Tottenham for £12 million in 2020, few expected Kyle Walker-Peters to become a mainstay in the Southampton team, with it being expected that he would be snapped back up by a big club in due cause. And, well, this could happen sooner than you think, with the 27-year-old right-back currently winding down his contract with the Saints. Despite making the return to the English top flight last season, Southampton are yet to agree fresh terms with the two-time capped Englishman, despite him being in the top 95% for passes attempted, pass completion, progressive carries, successful take-ons and touches across Europe's top 14 second divisions. And on top of this, he's also registering 2.83 shot creating actions per 90, which Southampton absolutely need this season if they're to have any success in the Premier League with their possession-based style of play, not picking up a single point in the league so far. Number 8, Tarek Lamptey. We're sticking with right-backs now and then over to Brighton as we take a look at Tarek Lamptey, who at one stage of his career seemed destined for greatness being linked with the likes of Chelsea, Manchester United and Arsenal. Sadly, since 2020, Lamby has suffered from a multitude of injuries, most regular being hamstring problems, which have seen the 23-year-old miss 424 days of football, during which he hasn't been able to take part in 80 matches, which is the equivalent of two full seasons in the Premier League and four matches extra. With this in mind, it seems unlikely that the Seagulls will renew the contract of the Ghanaian international who is currently the 10th highest earner in the squad on £35,000 a week, meaning he'll most likely be moving on at the end of the season, hopefully to a side who can help put his injury history behind him. Number 7, Fabian Schaar. Two seasons ago, Newcastle United were being recognised as one of the best defensive outfits in Europe, with the Magpies conceding only 33 goals in 38 matches, the same as league winners Manchester City, and one player who was key to this was former FC Basel defender Fabian Schaar who boasted 1.4 interceptions, 3.79 clearances and 2.92 aerial duels won per 90 minutes. Fast forward two years and the defender looks like his time at the tune could be coming to an end with the player who signed his last extension in January of 2024 currently into the final 12 months of his current deal and potentially being replaced in the side by the signing of Lloyd Kelly from Bournemouth and with the club clearly in the market for another centre-half after their failed attempts to sign Mark Gahey from Crystal Palace, it's obvious that they're planning for a future without the man who will turn 33 by the time his contract expires. Number 6, Ahmad Diallo. Signed from Atalanta in 2020, Manchester United believe that they'd acquired one of the brightest prospects in Europe as they face competition from the likes of Barcelona and Bayern Munich to sign the Ivory Coast International. This was further proven by his excellent 2022-23 season on loan at Sunderland, where he scored 13 goals in 37 matches for the Black Cats and produced 1.8 shots per 90. And because of his match-winning goal in the sensational 4-3 FA Cup match against Liverpool last season. However, despite this, the club have allowed him to enter the final year of his contract and potentially see the versatile left footer leave on a free at the end of the season. This is particularly surprising when you consider the fact that he started two of United's three league matches this season ahead of Alejandro Garnacho and has scored in 
one of them. Manchester United signings this summer have proven that they've got one eye on the future, and with the likes of Lenny Yoro, Matthias De Ligt, Joshua Zerxi all being viewed as long-term players, it stands to reason that keeping a young, attack-minded right winger in the side to provide competition for the likes of the previously mentioned Garnacho would be near the top of the priority list for the new backroom staff and club operators. Number 5. Dominic Calvert-Lewin Everton have found themselves in a difficult situation with Calvert-Lewin's contract set to expire at the end of the season as just two months earlier they stood to gain around £20 million for the 6'2 striker who's only scored 15 league goals since the start of the 2021-22 season. There was a point in time where Calvert-Lewin looked like he'd become a major force to be reckoned with in the Premier League with the former Sheffield United man thriving under Carlo Ancelotti during his short stint at the club, scoring 29 goals under the Italian and there was even talk of him replacing Harry Kane in the England starting 11. However, nowadays he seems to be surplus to requirements with the club seemingly desperate to get his £100,000 a week deal off of their wage bill amidst their financial crisis at the time of writing. They'll be annoyed they couldn't receive a transfer fee for him but signing him onto a new deal would probably just cost more money than it's worth so we can see this being a scenario where he leaves for free at the end of the season. Number 4. Christian Norgard Brentford they're going through a difficult time at the time of writing this list with the Bees losing Ivan Tony to Saudi Arabian side Al-Ali first choice key for David Rai to Arsenal on a permanent deal and there's constant rumours around the likes of Thomas Franks and Johan Wieser following suit however one player's potential departure which isn't getting spoken about enough is 30 year old defensive midfielder Christian Norgard who's coming towards the end of his contract at the club and honestly someone the club can't afford to lose after 2,446 minutes of football played over the past 360 five days, Norgard has registered 2.83 tackles, 1.99 interceptions and 1.77 blocks per 90, which are all in the top 90% across Europe's top 5 leagues including the Champions League and Europa League. And while people may be saying his age is an issue, after the first 12 games of the 23-24 season, Norgard covered more distance than any other player in the Premier League, with the Danish international covering 138.2 kilometers, and to put that into perspective, at this this stage, Conor Gallagher, the man renowned for his pressing and closing down of the ball, had only covered 134.6. Brentford would be losing a key player in their squad if he was to leave in the summer, and they would certainly miss out on a decent sized fee if he were to leave on the end of his contract. Number three, Tyrek Mitchell. Over the years, Crystal Palace has been the home of so many star players in the making. Wilfred Zaha, Eberichi Eze, Michael Elise, Mateta, Mark Gahey, but one who seems to go under the radar is Tyrek Mitchell, who I'm sure many clubs will be monitoring closely. In the 23-24 season, Mitchell was a defensive giant at points for Palace, registering 2.91 tackles per 90 and being dribbled past fewer times than any other defender in the Crystal Palace squad. Not only that, but he contributed more going forward as he managed is 1.85 crosses a match, picking up three assists and two goals. Not a massive amount, but for Palace, who started the season off with Roy Hodgson, that's quite impressive. Palace have always been shrewd when it comes to the money their players earn, but it's hard to argue that Mitchell shouldn't be on more, with the fullback currently only earning £40,000 a week. And you compare this to Will Hughes, who's on £50,000 a week, Chris Richards, who's on £55,000 a week, and 33 year old right back Nathaniel Klein, who is on £50,000 a week also. Palace would be foolish not to upgrade Mitchell's contract and according to reports they are exploring it but they need to get it done sooner rather than later as he's a player who many clubs will be looking to. Number two, Hyung Min Son. No one can question the ability of Hyung Min Son, with the former Bayer Leverkusen player registering 122 Premier League goals since arriving at Tottenham in 2015 and becoming one of the greatest players in the club's history. However, that doesn't mean he will remain in London forever, and in fact, he could be leaving a lot sooner than people think, with his contract due to expire in June of next year and discussions on an extension yet to take place for the Lily White captain. While some people believe his son is starting to dip in form, this simply is not the case, as last season, under Ange Postacoglu, Son recorded 17 goals and 10 assists in 35 Premier League matches, as well as providing 2.05 key passes per 90 minutes, putting him in the top 91% of attackers across Europe's top five leagues for this metric. The current contract Son is on makes him the most expensive player in the squad with a weekly wage of £197,000, which is £22,000 above second place Christian Romero and Rich Arlison. And while this is absolutely deserved because of his contribution to Tottenham, even after the departure of Harry Kane, this will be something the club are considering going forward as the attacker isn't getting any younger and Daniel Levy is notoriously 
shall we say, thrifty when it comes to wages and fees. So we just aren't sure how this is going to play out. And number one, Kevin De Bruyne. And we end the list discussing one of the greatest Premier League players of all time. Kevin De Bruyne, who may be gracing us with his abilities for one last season, after reports he may be interested in the move to Saudi Arabia in the summer. De Bruyne has decided to stay in Manchester with the Sky Blues, no doubt to destroy more hopes and dreams. I feel you pain, Arsenal fans, don't worry. But this doesn't mean that he will be offered an extension beyond the 24-25 season. Last campaign, De Bruyne dominated the league upon his return in January against Newcastle, with the midfielder registering in the top 96% of all midfielders in Europe for progressive carries, progressive passes, touches and shot creating actions per 90 minutes, as well as managing 4 goals and 10 assists in 18 Premier League matches. While this all sounds perfect, he is earning the most money in the league on a staggering £400,000 a week and with Manchester City's upcoming legal battles regarding their financial irregularities and the Belgium international turning 34 just before the expiry of his current deal it might be time for the man who's recorded the second most league assists behind only Ryan Giggs to move on. And while he'll be possible to replace, it's something the club needs to look at sooner rather than later. And that's our list. If there's anyone else you can think of, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.